happy readers! Today we're reading Linger chapters 25 to 27. My commentary on chapter 25 is going to be pretty short because most of it is inner dialogue and it's just a lot of like character development, which isn't bad at all. I thought it was really cool just to see them kind of, you know, think about what's going on with their lives and especially focusing on Grace. I am so freaking happy that Isabel asked Grace, you know, not really asked her, but said, you know, this has to do with the wolves, doesn't it? I thought that this scene is really funny to imagine just because they're having this serious conversation and the phone rings and they're both like, oh crap, is it Sam? On to chapter 26. That night I couldn't sleep, I made bread. Bread? Bread. I love Sam's description of things, whether they be people and their actions or like talking about the woods and things like that. Especially when he describes Cole as being an exploding star, I feel like that is a very good description of him and very just, oh, uh, you think about an exploding star and you're like, wow, that's crazy. But at the same time, that's kind of how Cole is. This chapter is very juicy once Sam and Cole start talking. It's quite interesting when they start being like, hey, you're afraid of this? Push you towards that. I really enjoyed the bit about Sam explaining uh, why he is a human, why he wants to be a human forever, for a long time, even though, you know, being a wolf was a part of him at one point, and he still kind of feels that within him. But at the same time, he's just like, you know, I, being a human matters. Like, you leave a legacy when you're a human. When you're a wolf, you know, people remember you when they become human again, but at the same time, you don't have those memories. You don't hold on to anything. It's just you and being a wolf and the pack. And even though Sam kind of has a just reason for not really caring about, well, not really connecting with Cole is a real thing. Um, they talk about trust and things like that, but I feel like Cole is actually trying to meet him halfway in a way, and Sam is still like, what? What are you trying to do? I don't think it was in Cole's best interest to uh, push, not really push him into the bathroom, but being like, hey Sam, let's face your fears right now, today, let's flood those fears and, you know, face them, get rid of them, whatever, even though he understood that it was a really big deal that his parents pretty much tried to kill him. Which is definitely something that makes me angry because thinking about somebody who really doesn't want to have this child now that they are deformed or whatever. I mean, I guess I understand the mentality of, you know, your kid has changed or they're not necessarily like all the other kids and all your hopes and dreams for your child have kind of been crushed and crumbled. But at the same time, you're like, he's still a kid. He's still, like at the time he was like eight or nine or something like that. And so it's just really not fair to anybody to try to, you know, take him out of the world. And in Cole's defense, he's just a dude. He's just trying to help his friend overcome this fear. And, um, you know, sometimes when you flood somebody's fears, it kind of backfires occasionally. I don't know what the st st bleh, statistic is, but, you know, that kind of thing might happen. Um, but he didn't know that. And so, you know, I don't think it's going to, like, break their friendship or anything like that or what it could have been. I think it, the, it might be on, you know, it might have some tension to it right now, but... I don't think it's gonna do anything too bad because it's not one of those things that like Cole really understood. Chapter 27. In these chapters I feel like Sam has a lot of self-realization and even though it's a horrible thing to realize he kind of sees you know even though my parents were judgmental and I don't want to be those people I've become judgmental towards you know I guess I don't know if it's necessarily towards people who choose to be wolves or if it's just people who are wolves in general. I think it's more like people choose to be. Um, I know we were talking in the comments in previous videos and saying, you know, he doesn't really grasp the whole, this person chose to be a wolf. Like, even though um, Beck chose to be a wolf, he's just like, you, what, what? I really like the bit when he's outside and he's talking about, you know, he feels that wolf still lurking inside of him and it kind of, I guess, for me at least, I interpret it as him uh, saying that we all have our beasts inside of us and our, you know, wolves who want to kind of spring out from us. I guess it's to say that we all have our rough moments but we still need to have those friendships and have those bonds and let people into our lives even if we might not understand them and we kind of just need to stop judging them for what we think they are, especially when he talks about, you know, I judged 
uh, Beck and thinking that he bit these kids instead of them actually choosing it and to kind of let that judgment go in a way, I guess. Yeah, realistically, words. Then we get to the second half of this chapter and Grace is talking about her mortality. This is kind of both sad, but also it's just like to think about, you know, what would happen if you died today. She's talking about all the things that she hopes to do in the future, like moving out and getting married and buying her red coffee pot. And I don't know if she's necessarily dying or what's really going on if, uh, I don't know, I think she's just gonna turn into a wolf and that will be that. I feel like wolves have been such a big part of her life that if she became a wolf, she would just embrace it and be fine with it, even though Sam is a human. So that is that for these three chapters. What did you think about them? I thought they were really, like really good chapters, like really getting down to business and all that kind of stuff, like getting to know each other really, because these groups of people, like these couples of people, uh, like Grace and Isabel and Cole and Sam, they, they know each other, but they don't know each other like friends and stuff like that. Like they know who each other are, but I feel like in these chapters they kind of took a step in their friendship and made some good progress. So tell me what you think about that. Also, I really hope you enjoyed Adrian's video yesterday with the Terry Pratchett books. Um, I hope you that you check out his channel and stuff like that. I'll put a link down there to that as well as BehindYellowEyes.com. Don't forget every week go to their website and blog thingy on the front page and they have some good discussion questions and things like that. They also have like the movie news and um, who should play the characters and fan art and all that kind of stuff. So if you ever want to see what's going on in the Shiver Mercy Falls fandom. But yeah, I hope that you have a great day and keep reading Linger.